Hey everyone, my name is Simpsy. How are you all doing? Welcome back to some more Crusader Kings 3 here today on the channel. We're back with episode 3 of my House Lannister series. Here today, we're dealing with a Westerlands civil war. We have Tywin's son, Gerald Lannister, trying to establish his hold in the Westerlands, but... The lords around him are rebelling against him and think his cousin is a better fit for the Westerland seat. And they aren't too happy how the old late Tywin ran the country. So, we are not favoured to win this one within the Westerlands itself. Now, luckily, we have a lot of allies. So, contextually, this is about 25 years plus after the start of the Clash of Kings scenario, there are still a lot of characters you know and love, but a lot of them have now passed away. So, my brother Jamie Lannister and Tyrion are still alive. My late father Tywin sired a bunch of legitimate children and not. Um, it looks like my nephew Oswald, who is... <laughs> Half Lannister, he rules the Riverlands, he's going to come over and help. My twin sister Jane is ruling as regent. My nephew Joffrey is coming over to help. Uh, Clegane married a Lannister as well. Has a bunch of half mountain Lannister children, which is cool. We are allowing the Lannister forces to... Um, commanders to take, well, command instead of myself, because we're not favoured to win this one. Essentially, within the Westerlands, we're at number two to one, but we just need to bide our time and wait for additional reinforcements to arrive. Now, the Lannisters do rule Highgarden, um, and a couple pieces of territory in the Reach. Theon rules the Iron Islands as a lordship. Robert Aaron rules the Vale. Rob Stark is king in the north, married to a Frey. And a Frey girl uh, sits as Queen of the North. And funnily enough, a Frey boy <laughs> rules down in um, Dawn. But at the moment, we are winning these skirmishes in and around Casterly Rock. So Gerald, just like his father Tywin, is going to have to stamp his authority on the Westerland Lords. Maybe it's a trait for them to be rebellious. Tywin had to deal with the rains and destroyed the house, along with the Tarbex. Maybe Gerald will have to do a similar thing. Have his own reigns. Okay, so the reinforcements are arriving, but we've managed... We're just capturing so many cousins and nephews. Because Gerald's... mother... is Stefford Lannister's daughter. So... Gerald is Lannister through and through. Hopefully can be a fantastic character, combining all the good qualities of Jaime, Tyrion, and Tywin. Okay, but so far we are winning this war, but man, so many disloyal lords. As the Tullys are going to arrive under my, sis my twin sister's command ship. Ooh... Come on, we might need to go help out the Tullys there. We've pinned them down, though. But we are winning in the Westerlands. It's just so hard and rugged, this area. Um, we'll try and get the endorsement, but I don't know if it's going to work. Gerald is married to Marjorie of House Tyrell. They have four children together. Tywin, who is half Tyrell. Jason as well. So hopefully they might combine to the title of the Reach in the Westerlands. As Garland sits there as King of the Reach, fiercely independent. But still trying to fulfill my father's dream of putting a Lannister on every seat. But no, Marjorie, 42, has passed away. To be fair, she's had so many children. It's kind of understandable. Like 12 or so? Had children with Renly. Tywin, my father, and now me. Oh, nice. And we're going to end this war? Oh, perfect. We've managed to get the traitors. Oh, what are we going to do? We've managed to win this war, and we've managed to capture the majority of the High Lords in the Westlands. Oh, my God. What are we going to do? 
do we do a gameplay perspective or do we do a role play? Because like, what would the son of Tywin Lannister do? I think you know what the son of Tywin Lannister would do. <laughs> if the West, like more than half of the lords in the Westerlands rose up in rebellion. Titus Brax, the head of the house, who was one of the main masterminds in this, he needs to be dealt justice. I don't think his children should pay for the sins of his father, but if there's any of them of, of age that are knights, they probably should be sent to the war. So Titus Brax will be ended. Quentin Bainfort will be no more. These guys are in their 60s as well, going for one last hurrah. Damon Lannister... My cousin, he should be sent to the wall because kin slaying is still a crime and I'm sure the Night's Watch, all, Night's Watch always needs more men. Lord Hulder, these are all formerly like Tywin's courtiers as well. Lord here, Lord Galvin, yeah basically if you're a, lo if you're a lord you should be, oh my god, Martin Payne? <laughs> Desmond Craycole. Reynold West, Stilling of the Crag. Lord Joss. Oh my god, I can't bear to look. We're going to get rid of all the lords. Alan of Ashmark. Lord Aegon Dane. <laughs> Red Sword. Sand Dornish. Colmere. Thailand. Uh, or you're a minor lord, so I'm gonna... Yeah, okay. So the major lords should be dealt with. I feel kind of bad for the lowborn. They should be either banished to the wall or go to Essos. Uh, probably negotiate your release. So essentially, like, Alan Brax here, he's 17. He was doing what his father commanded, but he was a traitor and a collaborator, so he should be sent to the wall. So we'll sort by... Major Lords get ended, their sons get sent to the wall, Miners get either sent to Essos, or banished to the wall. Lord Emery of Goldmarch should probably go. Alright, there is just so many <laughs> that we had to go through. We're still waiting for some of them to get accepted, so... Maybe send some of these guys to Essos. But... That means there's going to be a whole new generation of lords that are like Gerald's age. Interesting. Okay. Now we are going to get a lot of bad relations, but I think from a roleplay perspective, that's good. <laughs> Lionel the Strongbore. We have to get rid of you too. Alright. To the vile Gerald. So, essentially they have... No option, but a lot of these guys have been sent to the wall. Which is good. Nearly done through the prisoners. Others being banished to Essos. But a new restructuring has happened. And the Night's Watch is getting a new flux of volunteers, I suppose. I'm surprised they backed. Yeah, so Alan Brack, 17. Now at the wall. I wonder if any of these guys will become Lord Commanders in the end. Okay, so we do have... Queen Sarwin of the Reach. So she's a Stormland. It's like, why has she got a Dunda uh, Durandan crown? I could recruit her. I think keeping her imprisoned might be a good idea, though. 47, Lowborn, Faith of the Seven. So, Garland didn't marry a noble woman. And we've still got his children as well. We could potentially use them. Because we're essentially trying to combine the Reach and the Lannister hold. The greater Reach, as it were. Maybe we can even recruit them. Yeah, they're willing to accept. Because they were under Tywin's... Guest ship, you could say. Okay, so a lot of new lords. Edmar Craycall. Dennis Plum. 
Yeah, as you can see, all new lords. Tomard got away somehow. Andros Brax now rules, 23. But I don't know how long for. <laughs> My piety is down the drain. We're going to have to bring in new courtiers. And Gerald is going to have to live with the consequences of this. His brother's 52. And Tyrion's not going to have a claim. He probably would help Gerald now that Tywin's dead. If Tyrion had another brother, maybe he would be able to mend his relationship. Tyrion the um, Septon. <laughs> That'd be so funny. Um, and then who else do we bring in? Let's go with Marshall. Lord Cedric Wheel. Or Lucent... Oh, maybe we go with... No, nah, let's go with you. Alright, so Gerald's now... Single. So, he has four children with Marjorie. So, all those kids are going to have claimants of the Reach. Um, do I try and marry him into another line? So, I could marry Gerald to one of Rob Stark's children. So, Princess Sienna is 17. She's half Frey. So, he might be more inclined with that. Because Joff, my cousin, and my nephew sits the Iron Throne. And my sister rules from River Run. Rob sits in the north by himself. Does have a son. Uh, Sansa has four Baratheon children. Brandon and... Oh, Rickon joined the wall. <laughs> joined the Night's Watch. Went to the wall, joined the Night's Watch. John is dead, along with Benjen. We'll see if that gets accepted. And it has... Nice. Stannis still says he's king in the in, in Dragonstone. Still LARPing. Has some children. Oh wow, actually Shireen has a bunch of children. With who? Uh, just a random Stormlander. And another line here. Okay, so Stannis' line. That's a, that's a cool coat of arms. A ferret. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Theo Baratheon. Uh, then there's Robert's children. Well, in quotation marks. Malcolm is probably the last real Baratheon anyway. Okay, we've stacked up a couple more titles again. So it's probably not a bad idea to maybe give some of those out to my legitimized full brothers. So we've got Tiget and then Titus. So, we've got the Lordship of Ashmark. And we haven't got Castamere and stuff as well. Alright, so maybe I give my brother Tigert. Yeah, the High Lordship of Castamere. He can have that. But that kind of turned into mm, the air seat, like Dragonstone. So, Lancel is... One of my half-brothers. So we've got Titus here. And then we've got... Yerlin. Hmm. I can't legitimize Lancel. Uh, let's grant Titus... The title of... Triarch. Like, um... I think it was House Tarbex. Old Seat. Oh no, Jamie Lannister, my brother, has died at 60 years. My half-brother. Oh, Yulin died too. Son of Tywin and Marjorie. We've managed to get a bunch of old artifacts from my... Older brother, Jamie. Tyrion's still alive. So we've got Ashmark to give out to. We could potentially give that to Tigert, maybe? Because we asked Joffrey for Ashmark, didn't we? Because we took that from Marbrand. He's married to a Baratheon girl. One of Renly's daughters. And let's put the Maester Ormond here. I can officially ask for a pardon 
from my nephew, King Joffrey, The Storm of Baratheon, Marriage to Sansa Stark. They've still got a bunch of children. And my dear Kingsman, we're going to grant your request. So, Gerald has been pardoned by Joff. Oh, finally, I've had a child with Rob Stark's daughter, Sienna. She's half Frey. And I'm going to call him John Lannister. There's actually a ancestor <laughs> we called uh, John Lannister already. The Black Lion. So we might press his claim in the north, John Lannister's. The Battle of Thorn Hill. With vivid memory. When I managed to win a battle against Joss Rivermont. Yeah, that was the Civil War we had in the Westerlands. But so far we've managed to solidify Gerald's reign. Okay, so we've managed to inherit Leafy Lake from Pascal in the Border Reach territory that we managed to take. As you see, like there's these three Lannister banners in the south. We should be able to give that to maybe... Hmm. Maybe my half-brother. Lancel Lannister or Lancel Hill. Son of my father Tywin, Tywin and uh, the wet nurse. A secret has been exposed. Tomard the Proud Sterling. Nora Linster. Maybe she's of Lannister descent. This guy was one of the main collaborators in that civil war. But I think he got away with it. Uh, Tyrek is no more. One of my cousins. Oh, hang on. Lord Donald, the Black Swan of Red Watch, has declared his lordship independence. And, okay, so this gives us an opportunity. We could betray Joff. Um, at the moment, he's actually been a relatively stable king. So, I don't think I want to betray my nephew, but you never know. A couple generations down, we might declare ourselves a free and independent kingdom of the rock. It just depends. Joff is nowhere near as sadistic or cruel as he is in the books. So, only time will tell. We could betray him or his future children. We're still focusing on the Reach, more or less. And as Gerald is married to Marjorie Tyrell and has a bunch of Tyrell, half Tyrell children... We're still trying to combine the Westerland and Reach throne and essentially make it the Greater Reach. Okay, we should be able to deal with House Swan here, who has decided to rebel in the Dornish Marshes in this border Stormland Dornish Reach territory. It's a little bit of a a hodgepodge, a mishmash of cultures down here. I think it's like where Kristen Cole's meant to be fr from, but they kind of, I don't know. They mixed up in Hot D, his background and whatnot. Oh, wait, so Donald Snow... Wait, <laughs> wait. Donald went to the wall and passed away. Okay, but we're getting raided by Lord Donna Saltcliffe. Okay, so we managed to... Defeat House Swan quite quickly. Uh, a new claimant has arrived. For claimant of the Willows. We could press it. I've had a daughter now with... John's... Uh, Rob Stark's... Daughter again. We've managed to gain the title of the Lionheart. So unfortunately that note guys, it's time to end the episode here. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for... Episode 4 coming out tomorrow where we continue Gerald's claim and line. We're still supporting Joffrey on the Iron Throne. We're still trying to unite the Reach and the Westerlands. We're keeping a watchful eye on the Greyjoys. We have my nephew on the Riverland Throne. My sister essentially rules the Riverlands for the Lannisters. And my new wife is now of Stark descent from King Rob in the North. 
So maybe my future children we can put on the Winterfell throne down in Dawn. Ariana Martel rules with her Frey husband and Stannis and his children are still hanging out in Dragonstone. We've managed to throw back Fagon. We've hold we've won the War of the Five Kings essentially, but I guess Joff has allowed the North to be free and independent and we're still dealing with the Tyrells, so there's still only two kings in Westeros, not five, excluding Joff. But yeah, thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. Make sure to take care of yourselves. Have a fantastic rest of your day. My name is Ben Simpsey. I will see you in the next one. Thank you so much.